story of this game, though, Smitty started defensively for the Raptors. I mean, right now, the Raptors have gained more and more and more confidence. There's guys right now are looking, Isaiah and Christian, saying, I can beat that guy, that guy can't guard me, and I can guard that guy. We have to double-team Joel Embiid, but he's making it easy for me. Doc Rivers, Joel Embiid, James Harden, he cannot post up outside the top of the key, outside the three-point line, because it's easy. Once I come double, you just kick it. I don't even have to worry about blocking him out because he doesn't dive. Joel Embiid got a layup, a foul, or anything he wants inside the paint. This was the first half. Everything he did inside, it was easy, Kristen. I, everything in the paint, he got a layup, a dunk, easy dunk. And then in the second half, for some reason, he just started wanting to post up at the three-point line or the top of the key. The double came and he passed it and he never dove. There's no way they're going to beat the Toronto Raptors if he keeps playing outside the paint. And it's probably not fair that I mentioned that Pascal Siakam outscored Joel Embiid without mentioning that Precious Achua outscored James Harden. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I said this at halftime. And, and when I was watching the game, I said Toronto is playing like a team. And I see Philadelphia playing CYA basketball. I mean, they're just... <laughs> You know, and, and, and when you look at the way they were playing, they weren't playing collectively. They were playing not to get blamed for anything. They weren't trying to win the basketball game. They were trying to, they were playing saying, hey, it's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. Hey, I didn't make that dive. Somebody else make that dive. And when I look at Embiid, again, his ability to dominate inside. And at one point in time, you know, we was watching the game and we saw him outside at the, you know, at the hash mark asking for the ball. I mean, it, it was, you know, it, it, it was. <laughs> Look at those green marks inside, Zeke. Yeah, I mean, I mean he, only, he only had two, two shots in the paint. And, and I understand you're getting double teamed. But again, I come from an era <clears throat> where the best player, the best player, I come from an era where the best player got double teamed every night. But when you got double team, you still had to find a way to get yours. You just couldn't take yourself out of the game. Which is concerning when you bring up CYA basketball. If that's your default in a closeout opportunity, the next two games are also closeout opportunities. You, you're going to lose in Toronto. I, I, don't, I don't see Philadelphia going to Toronto and winning a basketball game there. I don't, I don't see them having the, the collectiveness. Now... Can they win a game seven in Philadelphia with that fan base, with that crowd? Yes. However, if that crowd turns against them in Philadelphia, you know, they, they could lose a game seven in Philly. But I see, this, I see this series going seven now for sure. Goodness. We were looking at the graphic that kind of tells you the story of the mm -hmm. game. When you look at the bench points, the Raptors – outscored the Sixers 29 to 11. It's got to be also a bit concerning in regards to depth, right? It is. I mean, Chris and Isaiah, no matter where it comes down to, Joel Embiid has to get into the paint and dominate because on that other end, they're spreading it out and they're just picking the Philadelphia 76ers apart. If it's a turnover, their speed gets them a layup. If it's in half court, they blow by one guy, another guy held, they swing it around, they get an easy shot. What Toronto is doing is drawing a double team. It's just off the bounce, I say, yeah. If you're Philadelphia, you gotta pound it. And if you're Nick Nurse, you're saying, good, I, 